Hi, this is Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve. And, you know, if you've been following this channel at all, or you uh, even read the name of this channel, Learn DaVinci Resolve, you can probably guess I'm a big fan of DaVinci Resolve. I'm a certified trainer. I've been using the product for a couple years now. Uh, I do these tutorials on it. So I must absolutely love DaVinci Resolve. And, well, yeah, I kind of do. I mean, I love the program. I think it's great. But is it perfect? No. There's a few things that really annoy me and most everything there's a workaround for. So today I'm going to show you the top five things that really annoy me with DaVinci Resolve. Let's get to it when we get right back. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this. And one thing that has always bugged me, but fortunately there isn't an easy workaround for it, is how DaVinci Resolve by default groups consecutively named images. So if we look here, I'm on my media page and I have this set of images here. And if I let's go over and I'll actually bring up the folder here. So if we look at the actual files, there's halter all B set dash one through 15, but it only shows up as a single file over here with one through 15 in it. And if I kind of go through here, I can see the different images. Now, quite often, this is very, very handy when you're doing something like a time lapse. That way you can, uh, let me go ahead and I'm just going to bring this into here. I'll go to my edit page. I'll drop it on here. And so if this was a time lapse, this would be great because it just acts like a single movie file. But when it's individual images, it's one frame per image and you could, you'd have to go through and cut this up and do things. And it's just kind of a pain to do it that way. So let me show you a workaround for that. So I'm going to get it out of my media pool here. And you got to make sure you're on the media page for this to work, right? So before you drag it into your media pool, so I have, it says halters one through four, halter all B set one through 15. I'm going to go up to these three little uh, dots here, click on that and say show individual frames. There, there they all are. Now, again, this may not be something you want to do when you're working on a time lapse, because if you have hundreds and hundreds of frames, that can really be a major uh, problem there. And, but this way I can just pick one of them that I want to bring in the timeline or multiple or, or all of them if I want to and be able to work with them individually a little better. So that's one biggie that um, bugged me and I see it brought up in the forums and Facebook quite a bit. So that's a quick workaround for that issue. Okay, we're gonna move on to another one and that's how problems with exporting individual clips work. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. I grabbed the wrong. Uh... So here's a number of different clips here. And I'll just uh, drag a few of these onto the timeline. And nothing really interesting here. Just uh, some random clips from the Osmo action. Okay, now on, um, oh, this will be a good one because this will really help explain what's going on. So now I have these. That was a slow-mo clip, so I'm not going to do anything. That's the walking clip. All of these are normal speed clips. So this also is a normal speed clip, but let's say I want to do something like slowing it down. So I'll go into my speed controls, I'll add a speed point, and I'll just slow it down right there. Now, I'm not going to bother to add speed warp to it or anything like that to clean it up. I'm just, this will be a great example. So now we're going to go to our deliver page, and I'm going to say individual clips, and I'll just call this uh, Learn DaVinci Resolve. And I'll just put this into a temp folder. Say open. Now, this is 
what I'll often do when I'm working with stock footage. I'll have all the stuff on the timeline. I have it all split up and I just want to export it all into one chunk. So I go individual clips, use unique file names. I don't need the source frame count. I'll say add to the render queue and start going. Okay, that completed and uh, we'll minimize some stuff here. We'll go find the folder here and okay there's all of our different clips no problem but let's look at the last one. Oh, it didn't slow down what's with that um, this drove me up a wall for a while until Resolve or Blackmagic said well it's not supposed to do that that's for when you're sending out XML or you know, something to another editor or grader or something. So, well, how do you get that? How do you make that work? And it's actually, again, a fairly simple workaround. You come on the editor, you right click on it, and you say, make it a compound clip, new compound clip. And now when you render it out, it will render with, ever, with whatever effects and speed ramps and all those things that you applied to it, it will work just fine now. So that's the workaround for exporting individual clips. And uh, like I said, just making a new compound clip before you render it, and it is good to go. So that's all there is to that one. Okay, so another kind of annoying little thing that um, I wish was just changed by default, although again, there's going to be a very easy workaround for it, is I've got a big clip and I'm scrubbing through, I'm hitting my endpoint, I hit my out point, I append it to the end of the timeline, and now I'm over in the timeline view over here. So I have to hit Q, puts me over back in the source viewer. Now I can hit play again. I hit in, I hit out, I add it to the time, and it's back over on the timeline view. Kind of annoying to have to switch back and forth. So under the edit uh, menu, it says switch to timeline after edit. And we're just going to turn that off. So now I'm going to be on my normal footage here. And I'm going to hit in for my endpoint. I hit out for an out point. I hit command E and it appends it. And I'm right back in my player. I can select a new endpoint can select a new out point, command E. It's command E is not normal. That's actually a customized shortcut. So whatever you have a pen to uh, end of timeline set out to. But for me, this is just super fast when I'm working with a big piece of footage that I can just in out, add it to the timeline, in out, add it to the timeline versus having to hit Q and bounce back over there and move around. So again, another kind of annoyance, but a very simple workaround. Now we're going to go ahead and get to my next little annoyance. And unfortunately, there is no workaround for this one. A um, little unfortunate, I, in my opinion anyway. But when I'm working in my color node, and I have these open effects nodes. There's no way of knowing which ones are going to work with the free version and which ones are going to work only with the studio version. Now let's take dehaze, for example. Okay. Now if I pull dehaze on here, it's going to work just fine, no problem. But if you are in the free version and you do that, you'll get a message saying you need to upgrade to the studio version and it will put a watermark on your image. Now that's fine because on one hand it does allow you to test and play with some of those things and decide whether, okay, I really need that feature, I should go ahead and get the studio version. However, What's nice on here is it does tell you which of these are GPU accelerated, which nowadays is pretty much all of them. So that's not really important information, but it would be very useful information to know which ones work with the free version and which ones are for the studio version. Because quite often uh, someone will ask me a question. There was one about how to get rid of, you know, like, um, an exposure shift or a white balance shift if you accidentally had it on manual. And a great way of doing that is with this color stabilizer uh, effect. 
and I had completely forgot that that was only available in the studio version, and I recommended it to someone, and he's like, hey, that's great, but doesn't work for me. So Blackmagic, if you're listening, and uh, I hope you are anyway, uh, please do something about this and make these so that there's some icon. Um, maybe the icon's only there when you're in the free version or something to show which ones of these do not work completely with uh, the free version. That would be highly appreciated. All right, and on to my next one. And this is one I have complained about quite a bit, actually, and they don't seem to want to do anything. So if I right click on here and I go to Retime Curve, let's just zoom in a little bit. Now, it defaults to Retime Frame, and I don't know why. This makes no sense. It should only start with the Retime Curve. So there it is, Retime Frame. You have to go in here, say Retime Speed, turn off Retime Frame. Now I have my standard speed controls and I can manipulate it. I have no idea why it would default to Retime Frame. You cannot set this as a preference. You, it does not save the last setting. You cannot set it per project. It is simply always like this. And I find it extremely annoying because the retime frame to me is pretty pointless. I only need retime speed and I have to change it every single time I edit a clip with any speed control. So again, Blackmagic, if you're listening, please fix this. At least make it save the, the last way you, you set it. And then I don't have to ever deal with it again. Or make it a preference or something to where I don't have to deal with this one. Because i got to say, that one is probably my biggest annoyance of them all. Okay, and for my final big gripe with Resolve, it has got to be the sound library. And while in theory, this is pretty cool. I mean, if I type in ambient, um, anything that has the word ambient is going to show up. Um, if I type in industrial, then anything with that's in the industrial category will show. Oh, gee, I thought there was more. What's going on? I can never remember what I have file names for. And heaven forbid I put music in here, I'll just never find it because it only searches on the file name or description. And if you just import files, there's no description. So there's nothing to go on besides the file name. I Look, I can even, I can rate them. It's got stars. Can I sort by things that have stars? Nope. Can I um, give me a list of all? Nope. Can I do, I mean, I literally cannot do anything but type in a partial file name. Now, while this is great and I have access to my huge sound library, I have no idea what's in it. There's no show all, there's no, um, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G type thing so I can scroll through. I can't put things in categories. There's nothing I can do with this stuff besides basically make a list of, you know, uh, file names. And now granted, these are organized, they're industry and agriculture and vehicles and transportation and things, but I don't remember all of those. I actually have to have a list in front of me to know what things I can even manually search on. So black magic, this one irritates the living crap out of me. I really, really wish you guys would spend an afternoon and fix up this sound library and truly make it useful. There is no workaround for it. The, in fact, the, I'll show you the workaround for it. The workaround for it is going to my media page, going to my backup folder, and going to my Dropbox and my subfolder where I have my music files, and there. Look, I can see them. I know the lengths of them. I know how many frames they are. I have file names. I can really see all of my files. I can play them. And I simply just need to drag them in 
to my media pool. So using the media tab to look at all the files I have is significantly better than the actual sound library that's included. So please, please, please fix this. I beg of you, beg of you, beg and plead, please fix up the sound library. For God's sake, fix up the sound library. Now, with any program, you can't please everybody. You can't design it to fit every single person's needs. And some things can be fixed, some things there's workarounds for, some things they may change in the future. But there's uh, obviously a few things that kind of bug me and have for a while. And, um, you know, hopefully this kind of gave you a little insight into a couple of those things and how to work around most of them. So thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve. Subscribe if you like. Hit the thumbs up if you like. Really appreciate all the support out there. Hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever there's a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.